If you've just got your DJI FPV quad, then you need to watch this video before you fly. Hi, I'm Ashton Droning on, and the new DJI FPV quad is taking the market by storm, but it's a very different experience flying this to flying your regular Mavic. For those of you used to a regular GPS drone, it's essential that you're very careful when you fly this thing and follow a few certain steps. And in this video, we're gonna run through the most important tips before and during your flight with this new exciting quad. If you enjoy these kind of videos and reviews of the latest DJI products, then hit the subscribe button below. Anyway, let's get started with the first tip. Now, unlike the regular DJI drones where you do get a pretty significant long flight time, the DJI FPV quad really does push the boundaries and that means that your battery is going to run out and deplete much quicker. Remember that in your app or in the goggles, the estimation on battery life is just that, an estimation. Therefore, it's a little bit of guesswork, but it's only really going to be accurate if you start your flight with a fully charged battery. Because if you take off when your battery is only half full, the estimate could be very wrong. Flying on a battery that's not fully charged really does risk you losing this quad. So before you fly, make sure that the battery is showing four lights and nothing less. And if it is showing anything less, put it on charge and wait until it's fully charged before you fly. The same applies if you land with a battery that's not fully depleted. Don't use that battery again, just charge it back up. And in the meantime, fly with a fully charged battery. This is a tip that also applies to any other drone really. Before you fly, always check the props because these quick release and quick fitment props can become loose. And if they become loose and you take off and start flying and then you lose a prop, return to home is not gonna help you because believe it or not, this can't fly on three props. So just do a very basic test, put the drone down on a table and just check that all of the props cannot rotate on the motor. That way you'll know that they're all securely locked in place. Whilst you're looking at the props, also check for any breaks or damage in the props and make sure that the props are all aligned and that the blades are not bent or distorted at all because any change in the prop shape will not only ruin your flight time, but it can also dramatically affect the characteristics of this thing in flight. Always verify the mode that you're currently in before you take off. And by that, I mean whether you're in normal, sports or manual mode. Whilst you're doing that, also set your camera angle before you take off, because once you're in flight, you don't want to start panicking if the camera angle is not quite as you expect it to be. My recommendation is to always start in normal mode. Even if you intend on getting into sports mode later, start there and then switch into sports mode later on whilst you're in flight. The FPV drone and the goggles both have an SD card slot and it's invaluable that you put an SD card in both. The SD card slot on the drone is in this front little container here and the SD card slot on the goggles is just on the side. The benefit of having a card in both means that when you're recording, it's recording simultaneously to not only the goggles, but also the drone, meaning that if you are unfortunate and do happen to lose your drone, at least you have a copy of exactly where it went down in the video on the SD card in the goggles. The other benefit of the goggles is that the audio is recorded from the drone here. So you won't get the audio on the SD card of the actual drone, but you will get the audio from the drone in the goggle SD card. And that's always quite interesting to have a listen to. This is a really important one when you're wearing goggles and you can't see the controller when you're flying. And this is to familiarize yourself with the buttons on the controller. Because once you are up there in flight, you can't just glance down at the controller because you've got the goggles on. The most important button to know where it is is the emergency stop button, which is the one highlighted with the red pause symbol. If for any reason during flight you get into trouble, one tap of that button and the drone will hold its position and help you avoid crashing that drone. If you don't know where that button is before you start getting into trouble, then you'll get into even more trouble. The other buttons to familiarize yourself with primarily are the gimbal tilt angle and of course the button to start and stop video recording. 
Always have somebody with you when you're flying. Not only is this a regulation in most countries now, but it's also a really important safety tip. If you're flying your drone with your goggles on and you start to hear movement around you or behind you, you're going to feel a little bit concerned and disorientated, especially if you have your valuables such as a bag or an e-scooter sat beside you at your flying site, because someone could easily steal them whilst you're not watching. So always have somebody there so that it's not just you on your own with the goggles on your face, someone to look out for other people in the area as well, because if somebody is approaching, you want to know about it so that you don't end up hitting them with your quad. Before you take flight, make sure you're sitting or standing comfortably, because once you are flying, especially if you're in manual mode, and you have the goggles on your head, it's going to be harder to find a place to sit down without potentially tripping up and falling over. Get yourself comfortable, ideally lean back against a chair or something where you can actually rest your back, and be sure that you can fully concentrate and commit to flying the quad without worrying about being uncomfortable. This one also applies to flying regular drones, but it's really important, especially if you're new to the FPV quad, and that is to make sure you've acquired enough GPS satellites before you take off. Otherwise, this drone is not going to hold its position. It does have optical positioning underneath the VPS system, but GPS is there as well as an emergency in case you're flying in darker light or if the VPS system can't get a lock. So when you start everything up, look in your goggles and in the corner of the screen, you'll see how many satellites have been acquired. As a general rule of thumb, don't take off until you've acquired at least 11 satellites. On the DJI FPV Quad, return to home will automatically trigger at 25% of your battery time left. Now that might seem a little bit early, but it's there for a good reason. And that's because this quad really does push the hell out of that battery. And it's the old return to home rule, whereby you should always fly out with a third, back with a third, and have a third left in the tank. Now, 25% is not a third, but it is a good safety margin. And therefore, when it does hit return to home, don't cancel it and keep flying, because if you really push that quad in the last 25% of its battery, you'll find that battery draining incredibly quickly, and you may end up with this dropping out of the sky. The other reason is for general battery hygiene. These batteries don't like to be drained down to 5%, because all you'll do is reduce their longevity. So it's actually better to fly to 25%, let it return to home, or fly it back manually, and try to aim to finish your flight on 20% battery and no less. A lot of consumers have moaned about the battery life on this. Well, it's not a Mavic. It is a sports high-performance quadcopter, and therefore the battery is going to drain quicker. Now, when you're flying up there with your goggles on, with the drone a couple of hundred meters away from you, you're not necessarily going to hear it so much. And for that reason, you might not be quite aware of just how fast you're pushing that quad to fly. When you're at full tilt on the controller, that quad is screaming, and that means a lot of battery power consumption. By listening to the quad, you get a better idea of how much you're pushing it, and if that battery life drains quickly, you'll know because you've heard it screaming, therefore you'll perhaps consider flying a bit more conservatively. When you're flying this, and if you intend on capturing some nice video with this little camera, always make sure that you're not flying in low light, because as with the Osmo Action and also the camera fitted to this, they don't really behave particularly well. They'll be full of grain, the ISO gets pumped right up high, and you probably won't be very happy with the results. Try to always fly on a day that's nice and bright and sunny, and the other key reason is because the VPS positioning system underneath if it can't see the ground, then it can't hold your position at times when the GPS is not able to give a full lock. Most of you out there have bought this because you want beautiful footage, so don't fly when it's getting dark because you just won't get beautiful footage. One thing that I've observed with this quad is that when you are flying it around, normally when there's a little bit of a breeze, as you turn with it, it will drop altitude. And that will be quite unusual for those of you used to a Mavic. Always be conscious of the throttle when you're flying it, and if you do go to do a banking turn, make sure you give a little bit of extra throttle to bring the drone up slightly if you notice it dropping. And this is very important when you're flying low down towards the ground, because then it's not very forgiving if it does hit the ground during a turn. You'll find this thing taking quite a violent tumble. 
It's likely that future firmware updates will fix this thing that me and others have observed, but for now, just be very careful. In terms of flight time, again, these batteries do run out very quickly, and so I highly recommend having more. When those of us who fly FPV and been flying FPV for many years go out to the field, we take four or five, maybe more packs of batteries to the field with us. It's no different with this. You're going to want at least three or four of these batteries. Many complained about this with the original goggle headset that the foam that it ships with is terrible. It leaks light and it's just not comfortable at all. DJI do sell a replacement foam for this and it's highly, highly worth ordering. Links are in the video description to go and grab that, but definitely the flying experience with that enhanced foam is a much better one. Also, if you're going out and flying intermittently for an entire half day or a day, you're definitely going to want something much more comfortable than this horrible hard foam on your face. Fly smoothly if you're looking to capture cinematic footage with this, because remember, it only has a single axis gimbal. It does not have the three axis mechanical gimbal that you find on the drones like the Mavic and the Phantom. Therefore, when you are erratically turning this quad, the stability is all being done electronically. As good as image stabilization is these days, it's not as good as mechanical stabilization, especially when you're flying at speed and also when you're flying in slightly low light because EIS needs light, else it just doesn't really work very well. Fly with silky smooth movements unless you are genuinely trying to get some rapid shots, but otherwise just take it easy and your shots will be far better. The design of this quad is not particularly clever with regards to the battery because the little legs here on the battery serve as the landing legs as well. Considering the value of these batteries, it's really not clever of DJI to have designed it like that. For that reason, when you're out in the field, bring a landing mat with you so that when you are landing, you're landing on a smooth, soft surface, not concrete. The other big tip I have as well, whether you're flying in manual, sports or normal mode, is to bring the quad back towards yourself, then make sure it's in a position hold hover by itself in normal mode, take off the goggles from your face and land the drone manually. That way you can see it, you can tell exactly where it's going to land, or of course you could even hit the return to home button. But just make sure that you're not bringing this thing into a skidding stop, because otherwise you're going to break this battery and then you'll need a new one. They are the droning on tips for getting the most out of this FPV quad. It's an absolutely brilliant product as soon as you understand exactly why DJI have produced it. And it's really to give the Mavic operators something a bit more free and creative. Regardless of what you're doing with it or what you're shooting, enjoy it. And hopefully these tips are useful. Share this video to any FPV Facebook groups that you're in regarding the DJI quad. Drop a comment below with your favorite tip from this video. Give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you're a bit of a plan. And of course, hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching.